Today we're going to look at upgrading from Easy Drummer 2 to Easy Drummer 3, but that's barely going to take a moment or two. What I'm more interested in showing you is how we get our old Easy Drummer 2 projects or DAW sessions translated over to Easy Drummer 3. That's really important and a frequently asked question. And after that, we'll discuss why or why not we should uninstall Easy Drummer 2 after we upgrade to Easy Drummer 3. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this one and full courses. Let's get started. So if you're considering upgrading from Easy Drummer 2 to Easy Drummer 3, I think it's a no-brainer. I've been with Easy Drummer since Easy Drummer 1, since it first came out, and I see the progress, and Easy Drummer 3 is far superior than Easy Drummer 2, no pun intended. So I think it only boils down to two things. You can look at the product page to see what Easy Drummer 3 has to offer, but it boils down to two things in my opinion. It boils down to whether you have $99 for the upgrade price or not. If you don't, don't do it. If you do, I would definitely do it from experience. And the other thing I would consider is, you know, can your computer run it? And is your DAW modern enough to run a VST3 plugin? Because all the new generation TuneTrack plugins are VST3 only now. So if we look at the system specs, here they are right here. You should check them out for yourself. And, you know, I would always recommend going a little bit beyond, if not a lot beyond, the required system specifications. But if this is all you have, you will still have a good experience. You can only take your DAW sessions or your big project files so far. So can you afford 99 bucks to upgrade? And if so, can your computer or DAW handle it and make sure your DAW can run VST3s? And if you're running a modern updated DAW, there's a, it's just 99.9% .9 chance that it's a yes, okay? And if you're ready to upgrade from Easy Drummer 2 to Easy Drummer 3, just do these few simple steps. One, if you purchase from ToonTrack.com, make sure you're logged into the account that you bought Easy Drummer 2 with. And after you log into that account, and when you go to checkout, you'll click this Add to Cart button, and you'll be able to select the 99 upgrade option. And the upgrades, I believe, are available on third-party sites, Musicians, Friends, Sweetwater, whatever place you prefer to shop. If you buy it from those third-party sites, there's a good chance you're just buying a code from them. Take that code, Launch Product Manager, Make sure you're signed into the same account that you bought Easy Drummer 2 with when you log into Product Manager and go register new project and just click on this and paste that code in here and hit register and you will see the Easy Drummer 3 upgrade appear. That's it. That's how you upgrade from Easy Drummer 2 to Easy Drummer 3. Now that you're upgraded from Easy Drummer 2 to Easy Drummer 3, there's some details to acknowledge so we can move forward with confidence. They're two completely separate programs. When you upgrade to Easy Drummer 3, it does not replace Easy Drummer 2. Let's acknowledge that information before we move forward. Easy Drummer 2 is its own application and it's its own plugin for your DAW. So you can use Easy Drummer 2 in your DAW. And Easy Drummer 3 is its own application and it's its own plugin for your DAW. Okay? So when you install Easy Drummer 3, it doesn't replace Easy Drummer 2. It's that simple. It doesn't replace any of your Easy Drummer 2 standalone project files, and it does not replace any of your Easy Drummer 2 plugins in your DAW sessions. That's why this part of the video is very important and a frequently asked question. As you can see, I have Easy Drummer 2 and Easy Drummer 3 standalone running simultaneously right next to each other. They both work fine. So you might have some important Easy Drummer 2 project files laying around on your hard drive that you need upgraded to Easy Drummer 3 so you can continue to use them and use the new fantastic features of Easy Drummer 3. And here's how you do that. It's pretty simple. First, I'll save the project as, and I'll call this my metal song. Now the save icons look really similar between Easy Drummer 2 and Easy Drummer 3, so I'm just going to name it something really particular and I'll put Easy Drummer 2. I'll save that on my desktop. And now 
you simply go over to Easy Drummer 3. You go to the File menu. Instead of going to Open, go to Import Easy Drummer 2 Project. I'm going to hit Don't Save because I wasn't doing in anything in Easy Drummer 3 yet, but if you were, do save that project before continuing. And now I'll navigate to that Easy Drummer 2 file that I made. Here it is, My Metal Song Easy Drummer 2. I'll click on it, open it. And we'll notice that not only do we have the MIDI I was using in Easy Drummer 2, this song, but we also have the preset in library that was loaded. Now here's my Easy Drummer 2 song in Easy Drummer 3. Let's move on to DAWs. Now we want to open up our old DAW sessions that have Easy Drummer 2 in it and update those Easy Drummer 2 plugins to Easy Drummer 3. It's really simple. All you have to do is know how to create a new track or instrument track and put a plugin on it, which you should already know because you've already created a session with Easy Drummer 2 on a track. So this works the same for any DAW and on any operating system. There's only one small hiccup that might happen because all the new generation tune track products are VST3s, not VST2s or .dll files. So those plugins are located on a different part of your operating system and some DAWs don't know to look for them there. If you installed Easy Drummer 3 and you don't see it in your plugin list, there's a chance you have to tell your DAW where those VST3 plugins are. I know an example in Reaper and in Ableton Live and maybe other DAWs might have this situation too. This will at least get you started. In Reaper, if I don't see Easy Drummer 3, I go to Options, Preferences, VST, and I'll put Edit Path List and I'll add a path to my VST3 folder and I'll put that path down in the description so you can find it on PC and Mac. And on Ableton Live, you simply go to the preferences and you look for, you know, the VST3 folder option and you navigate to it and now you have it as well. And if any other DAWs require that, at least you have an idea of where to start. So now that I have this older session, which is just this little twist beat, we can see I have the Easy Drummer 2 Vintage library with the dirty rock preset and you can see how small easy drummer 2 is because i'm using a large monitor resolution another great reason to upgrade to easy drummer 3 right so here's the trick and here's also just good common knowledge to know regardless of this tutorial right now is when you're in the plugin interface inside your daw you don't see that file menu and the settings menu in the upper left anymore, but there's still a main menu and it's over right here. And what's really cool about these TuneTrack plugins is even though we're using the TuneTrack plugin as a plugin, as an insert in your DAW, you can still save project files outside of your DAW session. That's really important. And as your workflow progresses, you'll see why. Here's one reason why is I need this Easy Drummer 2 plugin to save all its data, its library, its mixer settings, everything, the MIDI down here. I need it to save externally, just like we did before in the standalone program. So I go to Menu, Save Project. I'll go to a common spot and I'll say Twist Song. Again, I'm going to put Easy Drummer 2 because the project file icons look really similar between Easy Drummer 2 and Easy Drummer 3, and I'll save that there. Half of the work's done. This is how easy this is. I'll close this out. I'm going to create a new instrument track in Reaper, and you, sh you should do the same in your DAW. And I'll navigate through however your DAW organizes plugins, and I will find Easy Drummer 3. And now Easy Drama 3 is loaded on its own track in my DAW session. And let me just relaunch it so it looks a little neater. I'll go to File. Remember, this is in standalone mode. This is a plugin in my DAW. File. Import Easy Drummer 2 Project. I don't want to save, but if you were doing something previously, you might want to save. 
I'll navigate to that file and where's my twist song right here. I'll hit open. And now we have our Easy Drummer 2 project, the correct library, the correct preset, the correct MIDI, and the correct mixing settings, everything, everything loaded in this project. Now, before I hit play, I'm going to mute Easy Drummer 2, just right here. And let's see if it works. Now I've successfully updated my DAW session that had Easy Drummer 2 in it. And now that Easy Drummer 2 file, project file, has been transformed into Easy Drummer 3. And now I can use all of Easy Drummer 3's tools. Here's the last part of the video, which is even more of a frequently asked question. It's should I uninstall Easy Drummer 2? And it's very case sensitive. There's definitely not a particular answer. I certainly have not. A lot of people think that the Easy Drummer 2 sounds are so inferior to Easy Drummer 3, they just don't want to use up their hard drive space by keeping those. Now, don't just believe whatever people say. Use your ears and decide for yourself. When you launch Easy Drummer 3 and you used to own Easy Drummer 2, if you look in your library menu, you'll see Easy Drummer 2 Modern and Easy Drummer 2 Vintage. Those are the two libraries that came with Easy Drummer 2 and that have carried over to Easy Drummer 3. I'll just select Modern right now for the heck of it. If you uninstall not only Easy Drummer 2, but all of its contents, including its sound libraries, you're going to be missing, you know, those two libraries plus all these presets. And here's two presets I still enjoy and I think are cool is the 80s preset has a really good, bright, verby sound. You know, Easy Drummer 3 does not have that. It has stuff like it, but it doesn't have this. You know, so decide if you want to lose that. Uh, the metal preset as well. I mean, I used this preset for so long, I still like the sound of this clicking kick drum. You know, it's a, it's a great kit. Fantastic kit. Um, if you look under the snare, it's even a Vinnie Paul signature snare right here. So if those sounds aren't important to you, great. Uninstall all of Easy Drummer 2 its sound libraries and whatnot. But keep in mind, you should have already updated all of your Easy Drummer 2 projects and DAW sessions to Easy Drummer 3 before you did it. Because if you uninstall Easy Drummer 2, you're not going to be able to do any of that stuff we already did in this video because Easy Drummer 2 won't be on your system anymore. And don't worry, if you already uninstalled it prematurely, you didn't shoot yourself in the foot, you just reinstall Easy Drummer 2 and you can still do that stuff. So don't worry about that. Um, the only other reason I can think of besides you just not wanting the sounds is you need hard drive space back desperately and uninstalling the Easy Drummer 2 libraries and program will get you quite a few gigabytes back. So there's two reasons. You don't like the sounds or you need the hard drive space back. And let me make your life a little bit easier in case you're new to tune track workflows, especially be behind the scenes workflows. Let me go over to the product manager. Now in the product manager under Easy Drummer line, here I have Easy Drummer 1, which uh, isn't even installed. Easy Drummer 2 is right here, which is installed. Green check mark, ready to use. And Easy Drummer 3, the upgrade is installed, ready to use. But this is just the program. This is the plugin. This is the standalone application. And this is the MIDI here. Same here. The sounds are a separate install. So if I just scroll down here a little bit. Here's my Easy Drummer 3 core library, and here's my Easy Drummer 2 core library. This is the modern vintage product as well that I was talking about if you don't, never owned Easy Drummer 2. But if you own Easy Drummer 2, you install this. I actually have to update it. And if you own Easy Drummer 3, you install this. Here's the sounds. Here and up here. Here is the actual standalone application, the program, and the plugins plus the MIDI. That's how to look at it. If you're ready to uninstall Easy Drummer 2, you don't go into show details, download it, and then uninstall it. You actually use your system uninstaller. So I'll just go to add and remove programs and I'll type easy into the search box. Now, Mac users have different uninstall methods. Anyway, I typed in easy and I'll just uninstall not only Easy Drummer 2, but the update too, which is 300 megabytes. So here's quite a few gigabytes you get back just uninstalling the program, right? Uninstall it there. Mac users, um, people who 
who don't have elite workflows, they just drag them to the trash, get some hard drive space, or use a third-party application to uninstall it. Or if you're a pro Mac user, by all means, comment down below with what people are doing nowadays to do a professional uninstall. That's how you get rid of the program. How you get rid of the sounds is different, and here's what's important. If you just want to get rid of the sounds, you go down to the, for in this example, your Easy Drummer 2 core library, Easy X. You go to Show Details, and you re-download the product because the uninstaller is embedded in the original download. And after you re-download the product, when it's done, you select this small hamburger menu and you select uninstall. That's how you uninstall sound libraries. And the previous method is how you uninstall the core applications and plugins. So if you decide to uninstall everything related to Easy Drummer 2, your MIDI still might be left over. And if for some reason you really want it gone, here's how you get rid of it. I don't know why you want it gone though. So I've uninstalled Easy Drummer 2, the core program and the libraries. As you can see, I can't see those Easy Drummer 2 libraries anymore. They used to be right here where duality is. Awesome. Jacob Herman, uh, e Easy Access, you might want to check out. But I'll go to settings and I'll go to library paths. And it'll tell you where all your sounds and MIDI are located on your computer. I have a custom install, so it sits on my hard drive labeled T. It'll show you on your C drive or wherever you put it right here. Then you go over to this hamburger menu and you select show in Explorer or finder on Mac. And it takes you to your main bulk Easy Drummer installation. I'll click in here. Here's where we see all the sounds from the library. So you keep scrolling through until you see MIDI. Here's all the MIDI. I'll double click. Now, this isn't perfectly straightforward because it's kind of half code, half obvious labels, but you just look past, you know, the first code and you'll see Easy Drummer 3, Easy Drummer 2. Here we go. Here's the Easy Drummer 2 Modern Vintage MIDI and here's the Easy Drummer 2 Percussion MIDI. Between these two folders, which is thousands of files, It's barely over a half a megabyte. <laughs> so either you don't want those for some reason, because I highly, if you're hurting for a half a megabyte of information back by deleting these, then <laughs> you're, you've got other problems. I could literally right click and delete these. And after I delete those, I would go back into Easy Drummer, go to Advanced, and click on Restore MIDI Database, and then you will see those. Not only free up your hard drive space back, but you'll see them gone from Easy Drummer 3. So that's how you do a complete uninstall. I'm Sean from Shooty School. I hope you got something out of this video today. Check out shootyschool.com for hundreds of free videos just like this one. I also stream the first Saturday of every month. It's almost always Tune Track theme. So come join me live. It's a great community. I hope to see you on the next one.